Hi guys, so on this episode we've got a few different bits and pieces. The mulga snake which you saw the unboxing of uh, last time is now feeding or attempting to feed and settling in really well within the quarantine enclosures at, enclosure at the moment. Despite having a few cracks, he hasn't found the head yet. I'm sure he will. So yeah, we'll check out this little bit of him feeding. Then we'll uh, then we'll check out the scrubs and finish with a bit of footage from a from a zoo um, I was able to stop in at. So yeah, we'll uh, do that. Hope you enjoy. So he eventually found the head. It's good. That was a uh, a small rat, and obviously being in a lap, it, he doesn't get fed uh, things that are as as large as they might be if he was a python of this size. Such a beautiful snake. I'm a real big fan of the white with the black tipping. I do see a number of uh, these Alice Springs forms with a lot more white. This guy's got quite a lot of that dark tipping. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they're all very pretty. As he runs, most likely run back into his hide. Oh well, so that's all it is. is uh, we'll move on to to the next couple of videos. So this is my pair of Morelia kinghorni, formerly Morelia amethystina, um, the Australian scrub python, and uh, as you can see, both have a big feed in them. So this this is the female, and the male sitting up above her. Scrub pythons, in my opinion, are really underrated in one respect for how beautiful they actually are. They're a stunning snake. That slender body and that large head really, really makes them quite pretty. Got a real iridescence about them, but in the same throw, they get massively overrated. I think because well, here we go. This is a rare thing because people, I think, underestimate how temperamental they are. They are big, flighty, bitey snakes. They, um, and I guess not only just temperamental in the sense of when you deal with them, but they can be really temperamental in within their enclosure. Like you'll see, that's the male, the moment who's just starting to race around. But um, 
you'll see a few rub marks like on the top of his head and uh, see, just over the top of his eyes and the females rubbed her nose and that's just they seemingly go through patches of doing this of, of rubbing um, I'm not really sure why I'm, they just end up stopping eventually once they've sort of messed up their face a bit which is terrific really um, but yeah like I said I really like them really like them really very beautiful but they're shocking to work with they hate me um, I don't particularly like dealing with them just because once they get going they really wind themselves up tight so the female who's now underneath the larger of the, the two Probably at about three, three point seven maybe meters. She doesn't quite look at, but once she spreads out, she just keeps going. And the male on top, who's uh, probably coming up to three meters, I reckon maybe. Um, of the two, the female's far more, more uh, manageable. She's still big, still uh, typical scrub python. There you go. You can see her nose. Um, but um, the male, however, is just, I don't even know how to describe it. He just winds himself up so tight, so tight and just, just, yeah, just makes everything worse, really. But anyway, it's all part of it, I guess various species having their various quirks so in terms of what what they've been fed I feed them them all sorts of things from rats to rabbits to guinea pigs um, which is this instance the um, The real challenge, I guess, with these guys once they get to get to the female size is is finding food appropriate because rats really do, even very large rats, do very little. You're sort of still putting in four or five to get a lump, you know, half this size. Yeah. All part of it. Morelia King Horno. Hi guys, uh, just travelling through Rockhampton and thought I might go check out their zoo. It's actually a free zoo, so that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, here's a bit of footage from that. 